The best trends or crypto narratives that can make us a bunch of money have some mix of these four elements. They are easy enough for the average person to understand. People tend to buy what they know. It's why so many people asked me in 2017 if they should buy stock in Snapchat. The concept of sending a picture to someone and having it disappear in a few seconds isn't that hard to explain. Two, they are familiar, meaning we've heard of the overall concept before in a positive light. Think of it like John Wick 1 versus John Wick 2. Both are great movies, but the sequel did better in theaters. Three, they are difficult to value. If it's hard to value, price speculation has a chance to get crazy high, even with very little actual results or usefulness for the project. A good example is basically every crypto ever because not a lot of people are actually using the blockchain. Moving on. And four, they are relatively new to the marketplace or at least new enough to a large group of people. And in crypto, it definitely pays to be early and people like new things. It is what it is. These four things combined in the right way for the narrative as a whole and the individual crypto projects are going to mean the difference between multiple X returns and significantly underperforming during a bull run. And the best part is that this cycle, there's plenty to choose from and we really only need one to make some gains, chicken tendies or whatever Wall Street Bets is saying these days. I like those guys. Of course, this isn't financial advice. This is just personal opinions. If you agree with things I say or don't agree with them in this video, that's totally fine. You do you, we don't share bank accounts. But feel free to use this video as a starting point for your crypto research. Now, I do want you to know that participating in the crypto markets carries max risk, aka losing all your money at any time. Every one of these coins is effectively a startup, and statistically, most startups do not make it. So be prepared to lose it all. Remember Theranos, that company that was around for 15 years before going under? If you find find yourself in a position of profit, I encourage you to make an exit plan so you don't lose all your gains because this assumes the crypto markets continue to go up like they have in the past, which is not a guarantee. And eventually the bull market ends. Prices drop and our portfolios might never recover. You know, that whole thing. All right, narrative number one, meme coins. Hate it or love it, the people want what the people want. Meme coins are like music, some songs you just can't get away from and we really can't explain why. Do you remember Gundam Style by Psy? It's not even in English, but everyone I knew was dancing to it. The largest meme coin, Dogecoin, is currently hovering around $29 billion. For context, if Dogecoin traded as a stock, it would be on the S&P 500. Delta Airlines, a company that has thousands of flights take off daily, is currently valued at $30 billion. Make it make sense. You're right. It doesn't. The definition of a meme coin, according to Investopedia, is a term used to refer to cryptocurrencies named after characters, individuals, animals, artwork, or anything else that can be mimicked. Most are supported by enthusiastic online traders and followers and are generally intended to be lighthearted and fun. While meme coins may be entertaining to some, they are also highly risky investments and may hold little or no intrinsic value. So with meme coins, it's really hard to get an edge or advantage because these are so hard to value and there are so many of them out there. And by definition, they hold little to no value. I don't know the exact secret sauce that makes Doge worth more than Pepe or Shiba Inu. Maybe it's simply just a first mover advantage or something else. But there's clearly opportunity, billions of dollars worth here in this narrative. All right, maybe you're looking for something more tangible, something that can actually bring some real value to the world one day. Well, narrative number two is real world assets. A huge advantage this narrative has is the fact that it's relatively new. In addition, BlackRock has stepped into the space and has a tokenized fund issued on a public blockchain through Securitized Markets, LLC, a leader in tokenizing real-world assets. Well, it's kind of a big deal. Authority bias, baby. So what does tokenizing real-world assets or putting assets on the blockchain really mean? After all, the world seems to be operating just fine with none of our cars, houses, basically anything of value tied to a blockchain, except monkey JPEGs. Well, much smarter people than I have given us an answer. From this Chainlink blog post, there are some benefits to putting real-world assets on a blockchain. First is liquidity. In the real world, there are a lot of things that have value, but the value is generally locked up. So if you have a house worth $250,000, it has value, but you can't just take the money right away and do something else with it. If this asset was on a blockchain, theoretically, you could sell this asset like a stock on a stock market and get access to capital much faster than compared to today. Obviously, there's some kinks to work out, but that's the general idea. Second is transparency. People in the past have liked to say that Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is used by criminals. This has largely died down since people have actually used use the public blockchain to track down individuals in the space and tie them with illegal activities. So we already know the benefits of transparency from that aspect, but the article also mentions auditable asset management, which decreases overall systemic risk and the amount of leverage and risk in the entire system can be accurately determined. Remember when banks gave too many people home loans? 
I don't want to repeat that. And finally, accessibility. Imagine you want a share of Tesla. Well, just a few decades ago, you would have had to buy a full share's worth or not get any at all. But these days, with as little as $1, you can own part of a share of Tesla to build your position slowly. The same thing could potentially happen to assets on the blockchain. So instead of having to buy something full in cash, get a loan, or go through a company to invest on your behalf, you could directly invest into a fractional share of a property, a painting, a collector car, basically anything of value which otherwise would not have been possible. And speaking of new possibilities, narrative number three is, of course, artificial intelligence. ChatGPT was released in November of 2022 and within five days had already hit 1 million users. Two months later, it hit 100 million. We've all heard of NVIDIA, the company that designs and makes GPUs that allows for AI to actually work, and we've seen a 200% price jump in the past year, and to be real with you, you're listening to artificial intelligence right now. My voice audio was enhanced using AI. This is what it sounds like without it. It's a clear difference. You, yourself, or where you work is probably incorporating AI right now as well, or will be very soon. We've seen what's been happening with sound generation, image generation, and even full video generation using this shiny new toy. Then you throw in cryptocurrency. That's a recipe for attention, which is extremely important for Numba Go Up. So I'm going to tell you how I'm playing these narratives and what coins I'm in, but I also want to address the other crypto trends. What about layer one, layer two, base network, Bitcoin ecosystem, gaming, dino coins? Well, I believe there will be winners in all of those crypto narratives. All of them have their gems. They're just not the best options for new positions for me personally, and as you'll see in a moment, I'm really only participating in one of the three crypto trends in this video in a significant way. You can't just have a good narrative, you have to execute. You have to actually hold your coins in your wallets if you want to make it to multiple X returns, especially with 20 to 30% pullbacks on the way up being very normal. So here's my strategy as of right now, based on what I think is the top three crypto trends for 2024 with the most potential for upside. So for meme coins, my plan is very simple. Pick a coin that I think has a lot of elements that can draw a lot of attention to it, that is currently under a billion dollar market cap and forget all the rest. This is a lotto ticket gamble for me. One meme coin that is still flying under the billion dollar mark that is picking up steam quickly is the coin Brett, and there are a few reasons why I own a small position in it. First, it's playing on a second narrative, which is the base chain narrative. Long story short, Ethereum is expensive to use, so this is the answer. Transactions cost less on base, and Brett is the number one meme coin by market cap on the base network. Combined with Coinbase support, as Coinbase is backing base, and with the Dogecoin millionaire being very forward with his thoughts on it, comparing it to Pepe coin, another meme coin worth multiple billions, Brett might just have the social validation to go to multi-billions in a crypto bull run. This is, of course, speculation. Again, I want to emphasize the little to no intrinsic value part of the definition. But some other individuals are wildly bullish on Brett to the point that they're planning on turning thousands of dollars into millions publicly, which, as crazy as it sounds, is actually possible. I'm here for the ride, but I do recognize this is not exactly big brain investing. It's a meme coin. What about real world assets? For me personally, I'm actually not entertaining real-world assets at this time. I simply don't have the capital to stretch into the narrative, and I haven't done a lot of research into individual projects. I think this narrative will do well. Based on hype alone, projects will likely see higher prices during a run-up, but I am more interested in the top coins for RWA during the next bear market, because this whole concept might be a little too abstract right now for the masses, and it might not generate the kind of viral buzz that memes and AI can. But tokenizing assets seems to be in our future, so I'm highly interested for some long-term holds, but I do want to see who is building during the bear market for some good value pickups. I do believe because you can still be early into some real-world asset projects right now in April of 2024, there is a chance for some decent returns for early investors. It's just not for me right now given some of the other opportunities I see in the market. And as far as AI is concerned, this is my heaviest concentration in terms of the three narratives by far because this makes the most sense to me. I think the space is generally undervalued and AI cryptos associated with chatbots, GPU farms, image generation, this is all happening right now. I can confidently hold my coins even through market pullbacks, which gives me the highest chances of success in the narrative and the highest chances at more percentage, maybe even multiple X returns. It's pretty easy to see that lots of people could take interest in AI coins given the last few months of AI related updates and as the market heats up and projects start to deliver on their promises. So the AI coins I hold right now are here on your screen. I'm planning on selling all of them as the market goes up because I do believe prices will 
will fall like every other crypto market cycle. Most of these coins are tiny micro cap coins. Don't follow me blindly. Some of these could literally be complete scams. I have accepted that risk. And to be clear, this is degenerate behavior. I'm going for max gain. So I'm okay with max risk, total loss of funds. There isn't a lot of big brain analysis for these coins either. A lot of this is just relying on other people in the space who have had a good history of choosing good projects early and taking some calculated bets based on what they put out there. Based on my own research, after I hear about the project, how much money I'm willing to lose and my risk tolerance as well. The less development and team doxing and generally the more scammy the project feels, the less money I put in if I even decide to at all, given the more risky it is to hold. The plan overall is simply wait for Bitcoin to moon, wait for alt season, sell early winners, consider rolling profits over into coins that haven't ran up yet, or just walk away. It's really going to be a game time decision based on how much risk I want to take. And if none of that happens, I lose a bunch of money. That's it, folks. Let me know your thoughts and plans for the crypto markets down below in the comment section. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.